Section two of The Oresteia. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Oresteia by Aeschylus. Translated by E. D. A. Moreshead. Section two. Agamemnon. Part two. Wherefore, for ever on the wings of fear, hovers a vision drear before my boding heart, a strain unbidden and unwelcome thrills mine ear, oracular of pain. Not as of old upon my bosom's throne sits confidence to spurn such fears like dreams we know not to discern. Old, old and grey, long since the time has grown, Which saw the linked cables moor the fleet, When erst it came to Ilion's sandy shore. And now mine eyes, and not another's, see their safe return. Yet none the less in me the inner spirit sings a boding song, Self-prompted sings the fury strain, and seeks and seeks in vain to hope and to be strong ah to some end of fate unseen unguessed are these wild throbbings of my heart and breast yea of some doom they tell each pulse a knell leaf leaf were i that all to unfulfilment's hidden realm might fall too far, too far our mortal spirits strive, Grasping at utter wheel, unsatisfied, Till the fell curse that dwelleth hard beside Thrust down the sundering wall. Too fair they blow, the gales that waft our bark On fortune's tide. Swiftly we sail, the sooner all to drive Upon the hidden rock, the reef of woe. Then, if the hand of caution warily sling forth into the sea part of the freight, lest all should sink below, from the deep death it saves the bark. Even so, doom laden though it be, once more may rise his household, who is timely wise. How oft the famine stricken field is saved by God's large gift, the new year's yield. But blood of man, once spilled, once at his feet shed forth, and darkening the plain, nor chant nor charm can call it back again. So Zeus hath willed, else had he spared the liege, Esclepius skilled to bring man from the dead, the hand divine, did smite himself with death, a warning and a sign. Ah me, if fate ordained of old, Held not the will of gods constrained, controlled, Helpless to us ward and apart, Swifter than speech my heart Had poured its presage out. Now, fretting, chafing in the dark of doubt, Tis hopeless to unfold truth From fear's tangled skein, And yearning to proclaim its thought, My soul is prophecy and flame. Clytemnestra re-enters. Get thee within, thou too, Cassandra. Go, for Zeus to thee in gracious mercy grants to share the sprinklings of the lustral bowl beside the altar of his guardianship, slave among many slaves. What? Haughty still? Step from the car. Alcmena's son, tis said, was sold perforce and bore the yoke of old. Ay, hard it is, but if such fate befall, tis a fair chance to serve within a home of ancient wealth and power. An upstart lord, to whom wealth's harvest came beyond his hope, is as a lion to his slaves, in all exceeding fierce, immoderate in sway. Pass in, thou hearest what our ways will be. Clear unto thee, O maid, is her command, but thou, within the toils of fate, thou art, if such thy will, I urge thee to obey, yet I misdoubt thou dost not hear nor heed. I wot, unless like swallows she doth use some strange barbarian tongue from oversea, my words must speak persuasion to her soul. Obey, there is no gentler way than this. Step from the car's high seat and follow her. Truce to this bootless waiting here without. I will not stay. Beside the central shrine the victims stand, prepared for knife and fire, offerings from hearts beyond all hope made glad. Thou, if thou reckest aught my command, twere well done soon. 
but if thy sense be shut from these my words, let thy barbarian hand fulfil by gesture the default of speech. No native is she, thus to read thy words unaided, like some wild thing of the wood, new trapped, behold, she shrinks and glares on thee. Tis madness and the rule of mind distraught, since she beheld her city sink in fire, and hither comes, nor brooks the bit, until in foam and blood her wrath be champed away. See ye to her. Unqueenly tis for me, unheeded thus, to cast away my words. Clytemnestra exits. But with me pity sits in anger's place. Poor maiden, come thou from the car. No way there is but this. Take up thy servitude. Woe! Woe, alas! Earth, mother Earth, and thou, Apollo, Apollo! Peace! Shriek not to the bright prophetic god, who will not brook the suppliants of woe. Woe! Woe, alas! Earth, mother Earth, and thou, Apollo, Apollo! Hark, with wild curse she calls anew on him, who stands far off and loathes the voice of wail. Apollo, Apollo, God of all ways, but only deaths to me. Once again, O oh, thou destroyer named, thou hast destroyed me, thou, my love of old. She grows presageful of her woes to come, slave though she be, instinct with prophecy. Apollo, Apollo, God of all ways, but only deaths to me. O oh, thou Apollo, thou destroyer named, what way hast led me to what evil home? Knowst thou it not, the home of Atreus' race? Take these my words, forsooth, and ask no more. Home cursed of God, bear witness unto me, ye visioned woes within, the blood-stained hands of them that smite their kin, the strangling noose, and spattered o'er with human blood, the reeking floor. How like a sleuth-hound questing on the track, Keen-scented unto blood and death she hies. Ah, can the ghostly guidance fail, Whereby my prophet's soul is onwards led? Look, for their flesh the spectre-children wail, Their sodden limbs on which their father fed. Long since we knew of thy prophetic fame, But for those deeds we seek no prophet's tongue. God! "'Tis another crime, worse than the storied woe of olden time. "'Cureless, abhorred, that one is plotting here, "'a shaming death for those that should be dear. "'Alas, and far away in foreign land, "'he that should help doth stand. "'I knew the old tales, the city rings with all, "'but now thy speech is dark beyond my ken. O oh, wretch, O oh, purpose fell, thou for thy wedded lord the cleansing wave hast poured a treacherous welcome. How the sequel tell? Too soon twill come, too soon for now, even now she smites him blow on blow. Riddles beyond my reed, I peer in vain through the dim films that screen the prophecy. God, a new sight, a net. A snare of hell, set by her hand, herself a snare more fell. A wedded wife, she slays her lord, helped by another hand. Ye powers whose hate of Atreus' home no blood can satiate, rise in wild cry above the sacrifice abhorred. Why biddest thou some fiend, I know not whom, shriek o'er the house? Thine is no cheering word. Back to my heart in frozen fear I feel my waning love-blood run, The blood that round the wounding steel Ebbs slow as sinks life's parting sun. Swift, swift and sure, some woe comes pressing on. Away, away, keep him away, The monarch of the herd, the pasture's pride, Far from his mate in treacherous wrath, Muffling his swarthy horns, With secret scathe she gores his fenceless side. Hark, in the brimming bath, The heavy plash, the dying cry, Hark in the lava, hark, he falls by treachery. 
I read amiss dark sayings such as thine, yet something warns me that they tell of ill. O dark prophetic speech, ill tidings dost thou teach ever to mortals here below, ever some tale of awe and woe through all my windings, manifold do we unriddle and unfold. Ah, well a day! The cup of agony whereof I chant foams with a draught for me. Ah, Lord! Ah, leader, thou hast led me here. Wast but to die with thee whose doom is near? Distraught thou art, divinely stirred, And wailest for thyself a tuneless lay, As piteous as the ceaseless tale, Wherewith the brown melodious bird Dost ever, it is, it is, wail, Deep-bowered in sorrow all its little lifetime's day. Ah, for thy fate, O shrill-voiced nightingale! Some solace for thy woes did heaven afford, Clothed thee with soft brown plumes, And life apart from wail. But for my death is edged the double-biting sword. What pangs are these, what fruitless pain, Sent on thee from on high? Thou chantest terror's frantic strain, Yet in shrill measured melody, how thus, unerring, canst thou sweep along The prophet's path of boding song? Woe, Paris, woe on thee! Thy bridal joy was death and fire Upon thy race and Troy, And woe for thee, Scamander's flood! Beside thy banks, O river fair, I grew in tender nursing care From childhood unto maidenhood. Now, not by thine, but by Coctus' stream, And Acheron's bank shall ring my boding scream. Too plain is all, too plain. A child might read aright thy fateful strain. Deep in my heart their piercing fang, Terror and sorrow set, The while I heard that piteous, low, tender word. Yet to mine ear and heart a crushing pang. Woe for my city! Woe for Ilion's fall! Father, how oft with sanguine stain Streamed on thy altar-stone the blood of cattle, Slain that heaven might guard our wall! But all was shed in vain. Low lie the shattered towers whereas they fell, And I, our burning heart, shall soon lie low as well. Of sorrow is thy song, of sorrow still, Alas, what power of ill sits heavy on thy heart and bids thee tell, in tears of perfect moan, thy deadly tale? Some woe, I know not what, must close thy piteous wail. List for no more presage of my soul, bride-like shall peer from its secluding veil, but as the morning winds blow clear the east, more bright shall blow the wind of prophecy. And as against the low bright line of dawn Heaves high and higher yet the rolling wave, So in the clearing skies of prescience Dawns on my soul a further, deadlier woe. And I will speak, but in dark speech no more. Bear ye witness, and follow at my side. I sent the trail of blood shed long ago Within this house. A choir abidingly chants in harsh unison the chant of ill. Yea, and they drink, for more and hard enjoy, man's blood for wine, and revel in the halls, departing never furies of the home. They sit within, they chant the primal curse, each spitting hatred on that crime of old. The brother's couch, the love incestuous that brought forth hatred to the ravisher. Say, is my speech wild and erring now, or doth its arrow cleave the mark indeed? They called me once the prophetess of lies, the wandering hag, the pest of every door. Attest ye now, she knows in very sooth the house's curse, the storied infamy. Yet how should oath, how loyally soe'er I swear it, aught avail thee, 
in good sooth my wonder meets thy claim i stand amazed that thou a maiden born me on the seas dost as a native know and tell aright tales of a city of an alien tongue that is my power a boon apollo gave god though he were yearning for a mortal maid ay what seemed shame of old is shame no more such finer sense suits not with slavery he strove to win me panting for my love came ye by compact unto bridal joys nay for i plighted troth then foiled the god wert thou already dowered with prescience yea prophetess to troy of all her doom how left thee then apollo's wrath unscathed i false to him seemed prophet false to all not so to us at least thy words seem sooth woe for me woe again the agony dread pain that sees the future all too well with ghastly preludes whirls and racks my soul behold ye yonder on the palace roof the spectre children sitting look such things as dreams are made on phantoms as of babes horrible shadows that a kinsman's hand hath marked with murder and their arms are full a rueful burden see they hold them up the entrails upon which their father fed for this for this i say their plots revenge a coward lion crouching in the lair guarding the gate against my master's foot my master mine i bear the slave's yoke now and he the lord of ships who trod down troy knows not the fawning treachery of tongue of this thing false and dog-like how her speech glozes and sleeks her purpose till she win by ill fate's favour the desired chance moving like ate to a secret end o oh, aweless soul the woman slays her lord woman what loathsome monster of the earth were fit comparison the double snake or scylla where she dwells the seaman's bane girt round with rocks some hag of hell raving a truceless curse upon her kin hark even now she cries exultingly the vengeful cry that tells of battle turned how fain forsooth to greet her chief restored nay then believe me not what skills belief or disbelief fate works its will and thou wilt see and say in ruth her tale was true ah tis thyestes feast on kindred flesh i guess her meaning and with horror thrill hearing no shadowed hint or the all true tale but its full hatefulness yet for the rest far from the track i roam and know no more tis agamemnon's doom thou shalt behold peace hapless woman to thy boding words far from my speech stands he who sains and saves ay were such doom at hand which god forbid thou prayest idly these move swift to slay what man prepares a deed of such despite fool thus to read amiss mine oracles deviser and device are dark to me dark all too well i speak the grecian tongue ay but in thine as in apollo's strains familiar is the tongue but dark the thought ah ah the fire it waxes near me now woe woe for me apollo of the dawn lo how the woman thing the lioness crouched with the wolf her noble mate afar will slay me slave forlorn yea like some witch she drugs the cup of wrath that slays her lord with double death his recompense for me ay tis for me the prey he bore from troy that she hath sworn his death and edged the steel ye wands ye wreaths that cling around my neck ye showed me prophetess yet scorned of all i stamp you into death or ere i die down to destruction thus i stand revenged go crown some other with a prophet's woe look it is he it is apollo's self 
rending from me the prophet robe he gave god while i wore it yet thou saw'st me mocked there at my home by each malicious mouth to all in each an undivided scorn the name alike and fate of witch and cheat woe poverty and famine all i bore and at this last the god hath brought me here into death's toil and what his love had made his hate unmakes me now and i shall stand not now before the altar of my home but me a slaughter-house and block of blood shall see hewn down a reeking sacrifice ye shall the gods have heed of me who die for by their will shall one requite my doom he to avenge his father's blood outpoured shall smite and slay with matricidal hand ay he shall come though far away he roam a banished wanderer in a strange land to crown his kindred's edifice of ill called home to vengeance by his father's fall thus have the high gods sworn and shall fulfil and why now mourn i tarrying on earth since first mine ilion has found its fate and since i beheld and those who won the wall pass to such issue as the gods ordain i too will pass and like them dare to die cassandra turns and looks upon the palace door portal of hades thus i bid thee hail grant me one boon a swift and mortal stroke that all unwrung by pain with ebbing blood shed forth in quiet death i close mine eyes maid of mysterious woes mysterious law long was thy prophecy but if aright thou readest all thy fate how thus unscared dost thou approach the altar of thy doom thou scrumpst the knife some victim heaven controlled friends there is no avoidance in delay yet who delays the longest is the gain the day is come flight was small gain to me o brave endurance of a soul resolved that were ill praise for those of happier doom all fame is happy even famous death ah sire ah brethren famous once were ye she moves to enter the house then starts back what fear is this that scares thee from the house pa what is this cry some dark despair of soul pa the house fumes with stench and spilleth of blood how tis the smell of household offerings tis rank as charnel scent from open graves thou canst not mean this scented syrian nab nay let me pass within to cry aloud the monarch's fate and mine enough of life ah friends bear to me witness since i fall in death that not as birds that shun the bush and scream i moan in idle terror this attest when for my death's revenge another dies a woman for a woman and a man falls for a man ill wedded to his curse grant me this boon the last before i die brave to the last i mourn thy doom foreseen once more one utterance but not of wail though for my death and then i speak no more i thou whose beam i shall not see again to thee i cry let those whom vengeance calls to slay their kindred slayers quit with all the death of me the slave the fenceless prey ah state of mortal man in time of weal a line a shadow and if ill fate fall one wet sponge sweep wipes all our trace away and this i deem less piteous of the twain cassandra exits into the palace too true it is our mortal state with bliss is never satiate and none before the palace high and stately of prosperity cries to us with a voice of fear away tis ill to enter here 
Lo, this our Lord hath trodden down by grace of heaven, old Priam's town, and praised as God he stands once more on Argos shore. Yet now, if blood shed long ago cries out that other blood shall flow, his life blood, his, to pay again the stern requital of the slain. Peace to that braggart's vaunting vein who, having heard the chieftain's tale, yet boasts of bliss untouched by bale. A loud cry is heard from within. Oh, I am sped, a deep, a mortal blow. Listen, listen. Who is, Who is screaming, screaming as in mortal agony? Oh, oh, again, another, another blow. The bloody act is over. I have heard the monarch cry. Let us swiftly take some counsel, lest we too be doomed to die. Tis best, I judge, aloud for aid to call. O oh, loyal archives, to the palace all. Better, I deem, ourselves to bear the aid and drag the deed to light while drips the blade. Such will is mine, and what thou sayst I say. Swiftly to act, the time brooks no delay. Aye, for it is plain, this prelude of their song foretells its close in tyranny and wrong. Behold, we tarry, but thy name delay. They spurn and press with sleepless hand to slay. I know not what twere well to counsel now. Who wills to act, tis his to counsel how. Thy doubt is mine, for when a man is slain, I have no words to bring his life again. What, e'en for life's sake, bow us to obey These house dividers and their tyrant's way? And manly doom, twere better far to die. Death is a gentler lord than tyranny. Think well. Must cry or sign of woe or pain, Fix our conclusion that the chief is slain? Such talk befits us when the deed we see, Conjecture dwells afar from certainty. I read one will from many a diver's word, To know aright how stands it with our lord. The scene opens, disclosing Clytemnestra, who comes forward. The body of Agamemnon lies, muffled in a long robe, within a silver-sided laver. The corpse of Cassandra is laid beside him. Ho, oh, ye who heard me speak so long and oft the glozing words that led me to my will, hear how I shrink not to unsay it all. How else should one who willeth to requite evil for evil to an enemy disguised as friend weave the mesh straightly round him not to be overleaped a net of doom? This is the sum and issue of old strife, of me deep pondered and at length fulfilled. All is avowed, and as I smote, I stand with foot set firm upon a finished thing. I turn not to denial. Thus I wrought, so that he could nor flee nor ward his doom. Even as the trammel hems the scaly shoal, I trapped him with inextricable toils, the ill abundance of a baffling robe, then smote him once, again, and at each wound he cried aloud, then, as in death relaxed each limb and sank to the earth, and as he lay, once more I smote him, with the last third blow sacred to Hades, saviour of the dead. And thus he fell, and as he passed away, spirit with body chafed, each dying breath flung from his breast swift bubbling jets of gore, and the dark sprinklings of the rain of blood fell upon me, and I was fain to feel that dew. Not sweeter is the rain of heaven to cornland, when the green sheath teems with grain. Elders of Argos, since the thing stands so, I bid you to rejoice, if such your will. Rejoice or not, I vaunt and praise the deed, and well I ween, if seemly it could be, t'were not ill done to pour libations here, justly, ay, more than justly, on his corpse who filled his home with curses as with wine, and thus returned to drain the cup he filled. I marvel at thy tongue's audacity, to vaunt thus loudly o'er a husband slain, Ye hold me as a woman weak of will, and strive to sway me. But my heart is stout, nor fears to speak its uttermost to you, albeit ye know its message. Praise or blame, even as ye list, I reck not of your words. Lo, at my feet lies Agamemnon slain, my husband once, and him this hand of mine a right contriver, fashioned for his death. Behold the deed! Woman, what deadly birth, what venomed essence of the earth! What dark distilment of the wave to thee such passion gave? 
nerving thine hand to set upon thy brow this burning crown the curses of thy land our king by thee cut off hewn down go forth they cry accursed and forlorn to hate and scorn o oh, ye just men who speak my sentence now the city's hate the ban of all my realm ye had no voice of old to launch such doom on him my husband when he held as light my daughter's life as that of sheep or goat one victim from the thronging fleecy fold yea slew in sacrifice his child and mine the well-loved issue of my travail pangs to lull and lay the gales that blew from thrace that deed of his, I say, that stain and shame, had rightly be atoned by banishment. But ye, who then were dumb, are stern to judge this deed of mine that doth affront your ears. Storm out your threats, yet knowing this forsooth, that I am ready, if your hand prevail as mine now doth, to bow beneath your sway. If God say nay, it shall be yours to learn by chastisement a late humility. Bold is thy craft and proud thy confidence thy vaunting loud thy soul that chose a murderous fate is all with blood elate maddened to know the blood not yet avenged the damned spot crimson upon thy brow but fate prepares thee for thy lot smitten as thou didst smite without a friend to meet thine end hear then the sanction of the oath i swear by the great vengeance for my murdered child, by Ate, by the fury unto whom this man lies sacrificed by hand of mine, I do not look to tread the hall of fear. While in this hearth and home of mine there burns the light of love, I just this, as of old, loyal, a stalwart shield of confidence, as true to me as this slain man was false, wronging his wife with paramours at Troy, fresh from the kiss of each Chryseis there, Behold him dead, behold his captive prize, seeress and harlot, comfort of his bed, true prophetess, true paramour. I wot the sea-bench was not closer to the flesh full oft of every rower than was she. See, ill they did, and ill requites them now. His death ye know. She, as a dying swan, sang her last dirge, and lies as erst she lay, close to his side, and to my couch has left a sweet new taste of joys that know no fear. Ah, woe and well a day, I would that fate, not bearing agony too great, nor stretching me too long on couch of pain, would bid mine eyelids keep the morningless and unawakening sleep. For life is weary now my lord is slain, the gracious among kings. Hard fate of old he bore, and many grievous things, and for a woman's sake on Ilian land, now is his life hewn down and by a woman's hand o helen o infatuate soul who beds the tides of battle roll overwhelming thousands life on life neath ilion's wall and now lies dead the lord of all the blossom of thy storied sin bears blood's inexpiable stain o thou that erst these halls within Wert unto all a rock of strife, a husband's bane. Peace, pray not thou for death, as though thine heart was whelmed beneath this woe, nor turn thy wrath aside to ban the name of Helen, nor recall how she, one bane of many a man, sent down to death the Danan lords, to sleep at Troy the sleep of swords, and wrought the woe that shattered all. Fiend of the race that swoopest fell upon the double stock of Tantalus, lording it o'er me by a woman's will stern manful and imperious a bitter sway to me thy very form i see like some grim raven perched upon the slain exulting o'er the crime aloud in tuneless strain right was that word thou namest well the brooding race fiend triply fell from him it is that murder's thirst blood-lapping inwardly is nursed ere time the ancient scar can sane new blood comes welling forth again grim is his wrath and heavy on our home that fiend of whom thy voice has cried alas an omened cry of woe unsatisfied an all-devouring doom ah woe ah zeus from zeus all things befall zeus the high cause and finisher of all Lord of our mortal state, by him are willed, all things by him fulfilled. Yet, ah, oh, my king, my king, no more, 
what words to say, what tears to pour, can tell my love for thee, the spider web of treachery, she wove and wound thy life around, and lo, I see thee lie, and through a coward, impious wound, pant forth thy life and die, a death of shame, ah, woe on woe, a treacherous hand, a cleaving blow, my guilt thou harpest o'er and o'er i bid thee reckon me no more as agamemnon's spouse the old avenger stern of mood for atreus and his feast of blood hath struck the lord of atreus's house and in the semblance of his wife the king hath slain yea for the murdered children's life a chieftain's in requital ta'en thou guiltless of this murder thou who dares such a thought of thou yet it may be wrath for the parent's deed the fiend hath holpen thee to slay the son. Dark Ares, god of death, is pressing on through streams of blood by kindred shed, exacting the account for children dead, for clotted blood, for flesh on which their sire did feed. Yet, oh, my king, my king, no more! What words to say, what tears to pour, can tell my love for thee? The spider web of treachery, she wove and wound thy life around, and lo, I see thee lie, and through a coward impious wound, pant forth thy life and die. A death of shame, ah, woe on woe, a treacherous hand, a cleaving blow. I deem not that the death he died had overmuch of shame. For this was he who did provide foul wrong unto his house and name, his daughter, blossom of my womb he gave unto a deadly doom iphigenia child of tears and as he wrought even so he fares nor be his vaunt too loud in hell for by the sword his sin he wrought and by the sword himself is brought among the dead to dwell now whither shall i fly for all in ruin sinks the kingly hall nor swift device nor shift of thought have i to scape its fall a little while the gentler raindrops fail i stand distraught at the ghastly interval till on the roof-tree rings the bursting hail of blood and doom even now fate wets the steel of whetstones new and deadlier than of old the steel that smites injustice's hold another death to deal o earth that i had lain at rest and lapped for ever in thy breast ere i had seen my chieftain fall within the neighbour's silver wall low lying on dishonoured bier and who shall give him sepulchre and who the wail of sorrow pour woman tis thine no more a graceless gift unto his shade such tribute by his murderers paid strive not thus wrongly to atone the impious deed thy hand hath done and who above the godlike chief shall weep the tears of loyal grief who speak above his lowly grave the last sad praises of the brave peace for such task is none of thine by me he fell by me he died and now his burial rites be mine yet from these halls no mourner's train shall celebrate his obsequies only by a karen's rolling tide his child shall spring unto his side and in a daughter's loving wise shall clasp and kiss him once again lo sin by sin and sorrow dogged by sorrow and who the end can know the slayer of to-day shall die to-morrow the wage of wrong is woe while time shall be while zeus in heaven is lord his law is fixed and stern on him that wrought shall vengeance be outpoured the tides of doom return the children of the curse abide within these halls of high estate and none can wrench from off the home of sin the clinging grasp of fate now walks thy word aright to tell this ancient truth of oracle but i with vows of sooth will pray to him the power that holdeth sway o'er all the race of pleisthenes though dark the deed and deep the guilt with this last blood my hands have spilt i pray thee let thine anger cease i pray thee pass from us away to some new race in other lands there if then wilt to wrong and slay the lives of men by kindred hands for me tis all sufficient meed though little wealth or power were won so i can say tis past and done 
the bloody lust and murderous, the inborn frenzy of our house, is ended by my deed. Aegisthus enters. Dawn of the day of rightful vengeance, hail! I dare at length aver that gods above have care of men, and heed of earthly wrongs. I, I who stand and thus exult to see this man lie wound in robes the furies wove, slain in requital of his father's craft. Take ye the truth, that Atreus, this man's sire, the lord and monarch of this land of old, held with my sire Thyestes deep dispute, brother with brother, for the prize of sway, and drave him from his home to banishment. Thereafter the lorn exile homeward stole, and clung a suppliant to the hearth divine, and for himself won this immunity, not with his own blood to defile the land that gave him birth, but Atreus, godless sire of him who here lies dead, this welcome planned. With zeal that was not love, he feigned to hold in loyal joy a day of festal cheer, and bade my father to his board, and set before him flesh that was his children once. First, sitting at the upper board alone, he hid the fingers and the feet, but gave the rest. And readily Thyestes took what to his ignorance no semblance wore of human flesh and ate behold what curse that eating brought upon our race and name for when he knew what all unhallowed thing he thus had wrought with horror's bitter cry backstarting spewing forth the fragments foul on pelops house a deadly curse he spake as darkly as i spurn this damned food so perish all the race of pleisthenes Thus by that curse fell he whom here ye see, and I, who else, this murder wove and planned, for me an infant yet in swaddling bands, of the three children youngest, Atreus sent to banishment by my sad father's side, but justice brought me home once more, grown now to manhood's years, and stronger though I was, my right hand reached into the chieftain's life, plotting and planning all that malice bad, and death itself were honour to me now, beholding him in justice ambush tame. It is thus for this insolence of thine that vaunts itself in evil take my scorn. Of thine own will thou sayest thou hast slain the chieftain, by thine own unaided plot devised the pity of death, I read thee well. Think not thy head shall scape when right prevails, the people's band, the stones of death and doom. This word from thee, this word from one who rose low at the oars beneath, what time we rule, we of the upper tier? Thou'lt know, anon, tis bitter to be taught again in age by one so young, submission at the word. But iron of the chain and hunger's throes can minister unto an o'er-swollen pride marvellous well. Ay, even in the old, hast eyes and seest not this? Peace, kick not thus against the pricks, unto thy proper pain. Thou womanish man, waiting till war did cease, home-watcher and defiler of the couch, and arch-deviser of the chieftain's doom. Bold words again, but they shall end in tears. The very converse thine of Orpheus' tongue, he roused and led in ecstasy of joy all things that heard his voice melodious. But thou, as with the futile cry of curs will draw men wrathfully upon thee. Peace, or strong subjection soon shall tame thy tongue. Ay, thou art one to hold an argive down, thou skilled to plan the murder of the king, but not with thine own hand to smite the blow. That fraudful force was woman's very part, not mine. 
whom deep suspicion from of old would have debarred now by his treasure's aid my purpose holds to rule the citizens but whoso will not bear my guiding hand him for his corn-fed metal i will drive not as a trace-horse light caparisoned but to the shafts with heaviest harness bound famine the grim mate of the dungeon dark shall look on him and shall behold him tame thou nose old soul was then thy strength too slight to deal in murder while a woman's hand staining and shaming argus and its gods availed to slay him oh if anywhere the light of life smite on orestes eyes let him returning by some guardian fate hew down with force her paramour and her how thy word and act shall issue thou shalt shortly understand up to action o oh, my comrades for the fight is hard at hand swift your right hands to the sword hilt bear the weapon as for strife lo i too am standing ready hand on hilt for death or life twas thy word and we accept it onward to the chance of war nay enough enough my champion we will smite and slay no more already we have reaped enough the harvest field of guilt enough of wrong and murder let no other blood be spilt peace old men and pass away unto the homes by fate decreed lest ill valour meet our vengeance twas a necessary deed but enough of toils and troubles be the end if ever now ere thy talent o avenger deal another deadly blow tis a woman's word of warning and let who will list thereto but that these should loose and lavish reckless blossoms of the tongue and in hazard of their fortune cast upon me words of wrong and forget the law of subjects and revile their ruler's word ruler but tis not for our gibes thus to own a dastard lord i will follow to chastise thee in my coming days of sway not if fortune guide orestes safely on his homeward way ah well i know how exiles feed on hopes of their return fair and batten on pollution of the right while tis thy turn thou shalt pay be well assured heavy quittance for thy pride crow and strut with her to watch thee like a cock his mate beside heed not thou too highly of them let the curpack growl and yell i and thou will rule the palace and will order all things well all exit end of agamemnon End of section 2